All right, my friends, this is chapter 19. We are finishing up Stout Hearted Seven. This is what happened after. So what happened to them in their lives? Remember, these are real people. So we're gonna find out what happened to um, the Sagger sisters. Here we go. What happened afterward? It would be comforting to think that the troubles of the surviving Sagger girls were now over. That kind friends took them in and kept them together as the Whitmans had done, but this did not happen. The Oregon settlers were mostly poor, struggling and plentifully supplied with children of their own. A family might take in one child, but not four. Consequently, the Sagger girls were separated and never lived together as a family again. They accepted this situation with the same courage they had always shown. In their separate homes, they went to school whenever there was a chance, worked hard, had a few good times, and married young. None of them ever held any resentment toward the Indians as they grew up. They came to understand the causes of the massacre. First, the Indians felt the incoming white settlers threatened their homes. Then the tragic deaths of so many Indian children from measles and the false stories spread by Joe Lewis so upset and inflamed them that the desperate grieving red men had killed people who were trying to be their friends. Henrietta, youngest of the girls, had no children and died at the age of 26 after being mistakenly shot by a desperado in the mining town where she and her husband were living. The other three sisters all raised large families. Catherine and Matilda had eight children each, and Elizabeth had nine. Their descendants are scattered up and down the Pacific coast and into the Midwest. As time passed, Catherine realized that she and her sisters had lived through an important period of American history that should be recorded by someone who had been on the scene. Therefore, almost 10 years after coming to Oregon, she wrote a detailed account of the family's journey across the plains, of their life at the Whitman Mission, of the massacre, and their final journey to Oregon. Catherine hoped to see it in a book form and even dreamed that it might make enough money to set up an orphanage in memory of Narcissa Whitman. She was never able to find a publisher, but her story, carefully preserved by her children and grandchildren, is one of the most authentic sources of information about that tragic episode and is constantly used by historians and researchers. Eventually, the three girls did hear from relatives. One uncle and his family moved to California and once visited Catherine in Oregon. On the 50th anniversary of the Whitman Massacre, the three sisters were invited to be honored guests at the dedication of a monument on the site of the mission. It stands there today, a tall marble shaft like a finger pointing to the sky on the hill above the beautiful valley the girls had come to love. In 1940, the grounds and the great grave, now covered with a marble slab containing the names of those who died in that terrible, on that terrible day, became the Whitman Mission National Historic Site, visited by thousands of tourists every year. The three sisters all lived to a good old age. Catherine and her husband, Clark Pringle, spent their later years in the home of their youngest child, Lucia Pringle Collins, in Spokane, Washington, where she passed away August 10th, 1910, at the age of 75. Elizabeth died on July 19th, 1925 in Portland, Oregon, a few days after her 88th birthday. 
Matilda, last of the original Sager family, was living with a daughter in California when she died on April 13, 1928, at the age of 89. The participants in this story were not without their faults. Many things they said and did into, in light of today's understanding seem to have been mistakes. But of their courage and devotion to duty as they saw it, there, was, there can be no question. They truly were stout-hearted folk. All right, my friends. So Catherine and Elizabeth and Matilda lived really long, happy lives with family. Now, if we were still in school, which I'm so sad we're not, we would be taking a field trip to the Whitman Mission, and we would see this monument pointing up to the sky. If you go to the Whitman Mission website, you can go to the Whitman Mission National Historic Site, you can see some of the pictures on there. I hope that this summer that the Whitman Mission opens up and that either you with your family or I know I want to take my family, I'm going to do some videos and post those so that you can see if you don't have a chance to go there. Some of the mission and sites that are there for you to see. This is truly an amazing story about someone who lived through history. My friends, we are living through history right now. We have the coronavirus and COVID-19, and this is really unprecedented. This is going to be something that you're going to be able to tell your children about the time when you were in fourth grade and school got canceled. And you're gonna be able to talk about the feelings that you had so Catherine was very wise and wrote down all of the things that she remembered and that she felt. Excuse me. It might be a good thing if you have a chance to write down how you're feeling so that when you think about the things that you've been through, the coronavirus, school being canceled, all of the disappointments and things, and even some of the good things, spending time with your family, being at home more, um, having your parents maybe work from home. Um, there's lots of good things that have happened, just like with Catherine. She, the Sager kids had a lot of just really sad things that happened to them, but through it all, there were joy. There were joys that they found. There were things that gave them happiness. So I want you to think about what are the things that are sad and what are the things that are bringing you happiness? And write those down to preserve your memory of your time in history, just like Catherine did for her time in history. Now, the author, Nita Frazier, she read Catherine's account and then she put the book together. Um, Catherine didn't actually write this, but this came from Catherine's writing. So, very cool. My friends, I'm so excited that we finished Out Hearted Seven. Next week, I'm going to read a book on um, the Oregon Trail, covered, a covered wagon story. It's kind of a picture book. It's not very long. It'll just take me a couple, a few days to read it. And then I'm going to read Dun 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 Fudgemania. So get ready for some good laughs and some good fun with Fudgemania. And we will end our school year with good old Fudge. He's such a funny dude. All right, my friends, I'll talk to you later. Bye.